Hey guys, so this is where this channel becomes slightly confusing. Today we're not making any food, instead we're making a garden or patio table. If you enjoy the videos I post on this channel and want to see more, definitely give the video a thumbs up and let me know if you have any food requests in the comments. Let's get started. I first took two pieces of paper and traced out the lid from a container that had the diameter I wanted the tabletop. Then for one of the sheets I folded the paper to divide it into different sections. I traced one section onto the other piece of paper and sketched out the design I wanted and then traced that onto each section of the first paper. The technique I'm using in this video for making the design and transferring it onto the tabletop itself is definitely not the fastest way you can do it. It is just one way out of multiple ways of doing this and for this project it's the technique I chose to use. Once I was done, I found the metal I was going to use for the tabletop. For this table I'm going to be using copper, which to me is one of the most lovely metals to work with. I love the color and how pliable it is. The sheet I'm going to be using for the tabletop is 0.6mm thick. I then took this very dark or I guess charcoal pencil to draw all over the back of the stencil. I then taped that onto the metal sheet just so it wouldn't move and used a pen to sketch over the entire pattern to transfer it onto the metal. Since this is not going to be super visible and it's also going to be fairly easy to smudge, I went over it again with one of these Faber Castell pit markers which are waterproof. They're not really smudge proof on metal, at least not from what I found, but they do stay on fairly well and definitely well enough for you to be able to do this. For the engraving process I'm going to be using an electric drill and then for the drill bits I'm going to be using these cutters or grinders that I got from a website that sells jewelry making supplies. And if you don't have these there are other options. In the past I have done some engraving on metal using some cheap files or diamond bits that I got off eBay. On the clips in the beginning of this video you might have noticed that you can't really see the entire tabletop or the pattern very well due to the patina. So you might wonder why I engraved the entire thing if I knew I was going to be covering it up. To be perfectly honest, I was having a ton of fun doing this, but I also wasn't completely sure if I wanted the patina to be as heavy as I thought of in my mind. And so just in order to be able to have the option of making a lighter patina, I chose to just cover the entire tabletop. Furthermore, it's going to give you a better idea of how to do this on an entire table rather than just sections, but also you'll be able to see what this table would look like without the heavy patina. Since I am going to be using wood and metal for some of the projects on this channel, I am going to be making some basics videos with the tools and materials I use and recommend. I'm not sure when exactly those will be up, but I will try to get it done fairly soon. Next I used my metal shears to cut this out and I used a metal file just around the edge so it didn't have any sharp points. Then 
To make the legs, I first made a sketch on a piece of paper, just so I knew the exact size I needed them to get the right height. And I then used some pliers to bend some 1.8mm copper wire. This is one of the things I really struggle to record because it's so difficult to keep the wire and the pliers inside of the camera frame or the view of the camera. But hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. And you're going to need three legs in total. You're also going to need a ring of wire, which is going to go around the edge of the tabletop. The materials I'm going to use for the soldering process are going to be pretty much the same as in the cooling rack tutorial, which I will link in the info box. The only difference really is that for the soldering, instead of using a soldering iron, I use two torches. The torch on the left has a larger flame, and so I use this to kind of weather the metal and I use the micro or the smaller torch to do the actual soldering. I first use the larger flame on the pieces to weather them or make them look really old and rustic, especially on the tabletop where I wanted the most heavy layer of patina because in my opinion it's going to look a lot better than having a shiny copper base. And the process is then basically the same as in the cooling rack tutorial, you're going to apply any flux based product of your choice. Then place your solder and use your torch to melt it. When attaching the legs, I used two of these third-hand tools. You can get these super cheap from most hardware stores. And the reason why I like to hold all three legs in place at once is because if you attach one leg and then move on to the next, once you heat up the copper plate or tabletop again, the solder of the first leg might melt, and so it's going to fall over. Once I had attached all three legs, I made a smaller ring which I placed in the center and then soldered this in place to both add some more stability but also just add to the design. If you don't have the patina or simply just prefer this look, you can definitely keep the table like this. I personally really like the rustic copper look all on its own, but for this one I really wanted to add some patina. The patina I'm going to be using is this one by Swelligand. You can either then apply it lightly or generously onto the metal, or even soak the metal piece in this solution. I believe it says on the bottle that it's going to develop over the next 24 hours. I first applied a smaller amount just to get an idea of what it was going to look like and then after a few hours I applied some more to get a more heavy coating. The great thing about this product is, at least to the extent of my experience, it doesn't ruin the surface of the metal, so if you don't like the effect you can scrape it off. Once it was done developing, I used a fine grit sanding sponge just to get rid of a small amount of it. I then used this swelligan sealant, which is going to make sure it doesn't crumble off or flake or anything like that. And that's basically it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. If you have any food requests, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you have any requests for non-food items, please leave them on my main channel. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in my next video which should be up in the middle of this upcoming week.